Are you getting into Maxed Fabric and looking to use notebooks for your data processing, but you are not familiar with Python and would rather use SQL? Or maybe you would like to learn how you can use Python and SQL together to build your notebooks. Then this video is for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering and today we are covering using Spark SQL in notebooks. I know that there are many people who are way more used to SQL and are maybe a bit afraid to use Python and PySpark to build data processing logic, but would like to use notebooks in their solutions. Well, I have some bad and good news for you. The bad news are that if you are planning to use notebooks, it is almost mandatory to learn the basics of Python and PySpark. Or the other option would be learn some Scala that I don't recommend that much. The reason is that Spark SQL is not flexible enough in most cases to get the entire job done. The good news are that it is very easy and convenient to combine Python and SQL in your notebooks, and they work very well together. So you don't really have to make a choice between those two. And that is what we are going to learn in this video. So let's jump into Fabric. Let's start from my lake house where I have created this new folder called Fabric DE Series 25. In this folder I have this CSV file that we are going to read in to a lake house table and then query that using Spark SQL. In this CSV file I have some data about IMDB's top 1000 movies. Let's check out the contents of this file. And here we can see that this is a pretty long data set containing some data about movies. And we have multiple columns in this data set that we can use to query this data. But now let's go to our notebook. Here I have a blank notebook that we are going to use in this video to demonstrate how we can use Spark SQL in notebooks. But first let's read in that CSV file to a lakehouse table. Here I have a code that would read in that CSV file to a lakehouse table. First we would create a schema to our lake house where we could store that table. Then we would read in that CSV file to a data frame and then we would save that data frame to a lake house table called IMDB top 1000. Let's run this code. And now our code has run and we can refresh our lake house in order to see that we have a new schema there. And in this schema we have that table IMDB top 1000 that we can now use SQL to query. As we can see in the top bar, Python or PySpark is the default language in this notebook. Here we can see the other languages that are also supported in the notebooks. However, we can mix and match these languages. For example, now this is Python code, but if we would like to add another cell and write some SQL here, we can actually add two percentage signs and then SQL, and now we would be able to write some SQL logic to this cell. And here I have prepared some SQL that we can use to query this table. Basically what this query does, it selects the series title and renames it as title and then the IMDB rating and renames it as rating and also change the data type to double. Then we are also selecting only rows where rating is 9 or greater. And then we are ordering rows by rating. Let's run this code and see what happens. And here we have all the movies that have a rating of 9 or higher. Also a good thing to note here that there seems to be some type of bug in the fabric right now since I'm not getting the color coding to my SQL sentences that I'm usually getting here. Next we could try to execute this same query in a little bit different way by combining Python and Spark SQL. Let's see how we would do that. Let's add another cell here. Here I have a code that would leverage Spark SQL as part of PySpark code. So basically we are using this spark.sql function and then we are passing that exactly same query that we have there above as a string to that function. And then we can create a data frame out from that query. And then we will display that data frame in order to show you that we have exactly the same results as above. So let's run this and let's see what happens. Now our command has run and you can see that we have exactly the same result, but using a little bit different syntax this time. So in this case we don't have to use this SQL magic to run SQL and we are running that in a Python cell. My biggest problem with this code here is that the SQL query is a bit hard to read since everything is on one line. By using this kind of a line formatting it's way easier to understand what's happening in the query. Luckily we can do this same thing in this Spark SQL by using this kind of a triple quotation marks here. 
and this would happen in this fashion. So basically we would add these triple quotes and then we would be able to add some line breaks to our string and format that a little bit better. Now you can see that our Spark SQL is now formatted better and we can actually see better what's happening in this query. And we can run this query to see that we get exactly the same result as above. So basically we are still running the same query, but now we are formatting it a little bit better here. Next I will show to you how you can query this data frame too using an SQL cell. But before we do that I would like to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. If we would like to query this DF2 in a Spark SQL cell, we cannot actually query it like this. We can try to run this and we get an error. So basically this DF2 is not found using this SQL API here in Max Fabric notebooks. But I will show you a trick how you can do that. Let's remove this cell. And actually this code is exactly the same code that we have here. But instead of displaying this data frame, we are creating this temporary view out of this data frame called df2 view. And what this command does, it will create this kind of a view from this data frame that is then available for that SQL API. And we are able to query that using SQL cell. So let's run this code and this should finish very fast and now it is done and then we can add a new code cell here and now we are selecting everything from this df2 view that we just created there and now we should be able to query that and we are able to query that now using this sql cell. Now you should have a basic understanding how you can combine SQL and Python in your notebooks. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.